Hi, my name is Kelly Griffin and I'm a Solution Architect with AWS. Today I'm going to provide you with a quick overview of the AWS Storage Gateway featuring the Volume Gateway. So let's jump right in. AWS Storage Gateway addresses the hybrid cloud storage challenges our customers face. If you have workloads running in your data center that require cloud storage but don't want to rewrite your applications, you can consider using Storage Gateway. The Storage Gateway allows customers to connect to and use key cloud storage services such as Amazon S3, Amazon S3 Glacier, and Amazon Elastic Block Store from their premises. Additionally, the Storage Gateway integrates with AWS services such as AWS Key Management Service, AWS Identity and Access Management, AWS Cloud Trail, and Amazon CloudWatch. The Storage Gateway easily deploys on-premises as a virtual machine or via a pre-configured hardware appliance. And by providing a local cache, Storage Gateway enables low latency access to frequently accessed data. And data is transferred securely and efficiently between the on-premises environment and AWS. Storage Gateway offers three different types of gateways. Customers use the file gateway to store file data into S3 for use by object-based workloads, including data analytics or machine learning. It's a cost-effective storage target for backups and also as a repository or tier in the cloud for application file storage. All of this without needing to change the existing applications. And customers use the tape gateway to replace existing physical tape libraries with a virtual tape library. You can continue to use your existing backup applications and workflows while writing to a nearly limitless collection of virtual tapes. And each virtual tape is stored in Amazon S3 where it can be stored for long-term requirements. In this video, we will focus on the Volume Gateway which provides block level storage for your applications while storing this data in Amazon S3. The Volume Gateway provides block storage to your on-premises applications using the iSCSI connectivity. Data on the volumes is stored in Amazon S3 and you can take point-in-time copies of volumes which are stored in AWS as Amazon EBS snapshots. You can also take copies of volumes and manage their retention using AWS Backup. Then you can restore EBS snapshots to a Volume Gateway volume or an EBS volume. The Gateway helps you reduce your on-premises storage footprint by allowing you to use cloud storage for applications running in your data center. You can use Volume Gateway as a storage target for backup applications needing block storage for disaster recovery of on-premise applications to the cloud and migrate on-premises data to EBS using the Amazon EC2 based applications. There are two modes of Volume Gateway the stored mode and cache mode. Let's dive into each of these now. By using cached volumes, you can use Amazon S3 as your primary data storage while retaining frequently accessed data locally in your storage gateway. The cache volumes minimize the need to scale your on-premises storage infrastructure while still providing your applications with low latency access to their frequently accessed data. And as you can see in the diagram, AWS Storage Gateway stores all of your on-premises application data in a storage volume in Amazon S3, which you can take a snapshot of. And these point-in-time snapshots are also stored in Amazon S3 as an EBS snapshot. And when you take a new snapshot, only the data that has changed since your last snapshot is stored. All gateway data and snapshot data for cached volumes is compressed and stored in Amazon S3 as encrypted at rest using the server-side encryption. By using stored volumes, you can store your primary data locally while asynchronously backing up that data to AWS. Stored volumes provide your on-premises applications low latency access to their entire data sets. At the same time, they provide durable offsite backups. With stored backup, backup volumes, you can maintain your volume storage on-premises in your data center. That is, you store all your application data on your on-premises storage hardware. Then, using features that help maintain data security, the gateway uploads data to the AWS cloud for cost-effective backup and rapid disaster recovery. 
This solution is ideal if you want to keep data locally on premises because you need to have low latency access to all your data and also maintain backups in AWS. Let's have a look inside the AWS console on how to get started. To start, log into the AWS console using your AWS cloud credentials. Then click on services and then click on storage gateway under the storage category. For new storage gateway customers, you will be presented with a welcome page outlining the benefits of AWS Storage Gateway. Click Get Started to proceed. We will then click the storage gateway that you would like to use. Here you choose Volume Gateway. You will also need to decide on which volume type you wish to use, cached volumes or stored volumes. You will then click on the deployment option you would like to use. There are several virtual machine options, as well as an Amazon EC2 and the hardware appliance. Follow the specific instructions to get your gateway installed as you continue through the next steps. To connect to your gateway, first get the IP address of your new gateway virtual machine. You use this gateway to activate your storage gateway. When you deployed the virtual machine, you allocated local disks for your gateway. Now you can configure your gateway to use these disks. For a cached volume, you configure at least one disk for an upload buffer and the other for cache storage. For a stored volume, you configure at least one disk for an upload buffer and allocate the rest of the storage for your application data. Once the gateway is created, you will be presented with the overview page. Here you will be able to see the details of the gateway that you have within your environment, including access to other AWS services that are tightly integrated, including CloudWatch for monitoring. Previously, you allocated local disks that are added to the VM cache storage and the upload buffer. Now, you create a storage volume to which your applications read and write data. So now we will need to click on Create Volume. For volume content, your choices depend on the type of gateway that you are creating the volume for. For cached volumes, you will have the option to deploy an empty volume or one based on an EBS snapshot. For stored volumes, you will have the option to deploy an empty volume or one based on a snapshot as well as preserving any of the existing data on disk. Now you're ready to connect to the volume or volumes that you just created. You use the iSCSI initiator in your client to connect to your volumes and can follow the instructions found within our documentation or by following the links. I hope this was an informative overview of the AWS Storage Gateway featuring the Volume Gateway. You can find additional information and documentation by accessing the AWS Storage Gateway product page. Thank you.